Check, 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 check. Good evening. Are you happy to be back in the house of the living God? Come on. Can we sing a little bit before we? Hallelujah. You know, praise, praise is a universal language. And uh, it is, it is the, an act of victory. When we lift up our hands, this means the same thing across the entire globe. In any country you go to, I don't care if it's the most remote village in Africa. This means the same thing everywhere. It means two things. It means victory and it means surrender. And how many know in Christ Jesus you can't have victory until you surrender? That's right. Amen. <laughs> the world may give up on him. People you know and love may give up on him. But I'm here to tell you right now. For solid Christians, his praise will forever be on my lips. Can we sing about it tonight? On four, one, two, three, four. Oh. is devoted Angels and saints, so we sing worthy 
your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on keep my singing your lips. praise ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my lips your praise will ever be on my lips ever be on my Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my Come on, somebody. Yeah. Reverend Eddie, come on and pray us in tonight, brother. Father God, I lift this evening up to you, Father, and I lift Pastor Daniel up to you right now in the name of Jesus for an anointing, Father, as he brings the word. Father God, I thank you for your spirit. I thank you that you're present here with us right now, Father. I thank you, God, that you're working right now in this room, Father. And Father, I thank you for every individual here, Father, whatever's going on in their hearts, Lord God. I know you're working right now in them. And Father, I just thank you for all that you do for us, Lord, your love, grace, and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap. You may be seated. Come on and sit down with me. Hallelujah. Good to see you tonight. Don't leave. Don't leave, brother. There you go. All right. Good to have you with us tonight. Can we thank our online audience for tuning in? Because they could have tuned in to any church, but they chose to watch yours tonight. Hallelujah. Services are always available online with Facebook and YouTube, so please share. Sharing the gospel is easier now than it ever has been before. So please just click share tonight on the live feed and you will be evangelizing because I am here to tell you we're about to preach flat out the word of God up in here. Amen. Amen. There are plenty of ways to give tonight. If you cannot attend, you can give on our website, cfcsandycross.com. There's a giving feature there. You can also give on our Share Faith app. The download instructions for Apple and Android are on our website and Facebook page. And you can also mail in your donation to Christian Fellowship Church, 7814 South NC Highway, 58 M City, North Carolina, 27822. And again, thank you for your faithfulness. You can give in person now by safely dropping your tithing offering in the usher's bucket at the back or by simply sitting right there and do not move a muscle and use your mobile device. Hallelujah. And you can give that way. Any visitors tonight, turn in your slips to the connect corner. After service, we've got a, a gift out there for you. How about ladies' fellowship luncheon this past Sunday was awesome, and we thank all the ladies that participated. The shoebox blessings through Samaritan's Purse are due this Sunday, right? This Sunday, we're getting ready to ship them out. 
and really bless some children across the globe. All right, so if you want to do that, they can pick up the box at the Connect Corner, fill it up with everything except anything depicting war, right? So no toy soldiers or anything like that, no tanks, no guns. Uh, these kids in these countries, they've seen enough of that, amen? So uh, put everything but that in there. Uh, that's shoebox blessings through Samaritan's Purse due this Sunday. Men's Fellowship, Brother Eddie. Thanksgiving lunch is this Sunday after service, and I have to admit this is, what, this is my favorite gathering because we are deep frying some turkeys, y'all. Hallelujah. If you've never had a deep fried turkey, fellas, you need to come see what's up. Hallelujah. All right, annual early midweek service due to Thanksgiving uh, this Tuesday, okay, this coming Tuesday. So don't come to church next Wednesday night. You will come to an empty parking lot. Come Tuesday instead. We've done that for years. Pastor Jerry always did it, and it makes sense, and there's no reason to change it because it's just too convenient. It gives you more time to prepare. It gives you time to travel and all the things you want to do and need to do for your holiday. So we'll do this, and this is fun. I love this, but we'll do it next Tuesday or this Tuesday, I guess you'd say. All right, annual, oh, no, I've already said that. Men's and Ladies Fellowship Christmas Party is Friday, December 2nd. At 7 p.m., it's something different in Wilson. Register with Gladys Hall. She's out tonight, um, so just see her Sunday. $25 a person, $50 a couple. If you'd like to sponsor an individual couple, just make Sister Gladys aware of who it is for. Uh, big Christmas celebration, Sunday, Sunday, December 18th at 10 a.m., plus a bake sale for our missions. Please donate bake sale items for this event to help sponsor our missions efforts, and we thank you for that. Uh, then the following weekend, instead of gathering on Sunday, we're going to gather on a Friday night. We've never done this before. I'm expecting a good turnout. Amen. Hallelujah. So come get your church on that Friday night. You take that Sunday off, and you spend Christmas with your family. Amen. That Friday night, we're going to have a Christmas weekend candlelight communion ceremony. That's Friday, December 23rd at 7 p.m. Nursery care only for this special service. I want the King's kids and the Fusion students to be in here. We're going to have a good, good time. Amen. We welcome our newest members to CFC, Peggy Bunn and Stacy Dawson. Hallelujah. And if you're here uh, in, in person, you can... On the live feed, you can comment in the comment section your prayer request tonight, or you can fill out a prayer card and drop it in the box back there where CJ is. And if you're online tonight only, you can put your prayer request in the comment section, and I promise you, me and this great man of God right here are going to go over them, and we're going to pray for them as a church, all right? And we're going to do that, but we're going to do it after the word, okay? After the word. Right now, Fusion students, King's kids, and Junior King's kids can be dismissed at this time. Can we thank our volunteers for sacrificing their time with your children? Hallelujah. Turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 6. The Gospel of John, chapter 6. The Gospel of John. Chapter 6, we are in a new series. Anybody know what it's called? A solid amen. A solid amen. Oh, I love the colors, red, white, and blue. A solid amen. The word amen means so be it. And it's always said aloud, therefore making it a declared agreement. In our prior series on prayer, we hit on the power of agreement. So this whole series... It's going to center around that and how much solidarity we actually live out concerning what we've agreed to in prayer and scripture. We must back up and live out our amen. And for too long now, Christians' amen has been too shady and too shaky. Hypocrisy happens, yes, but it always hurts and it always hinders. And in the time we're living in now, we just don't have no time for it no more. Amen. A lot of preachers will stand behind a pulpit today and say, it's time to get your act together. Guess what? There's no more time left. You're either in or you're out. And my preaching, God has really showed me that it's going to get a whole lot more serious uh, in these days we're living in. And as much as I love everybody that graces those doors, you may not want to grace them. 
because I'm going to be preaching hard because it's time to get you ready for heaven. I'm not here to speak doom and gloom, but I have no more faith in this country as it is right now. You know why? It's not because of the world. It's because of the church. Our churches are misinformed. Christians are taking the side of heathenistic and demonic assignments, and they're calling it Christianity. They're living in abominations, and they're calling it saved. When it's got nothing to do, if that's saved, then I don't know what I'm talking about, and I need to retire and quit, because it's not. We're aligning ourselves and agreeing with the wrong things. Amen? Can I tell you that? And I'm not here to be political. I'm here to be biblical. And to be biblical is to be political. And I know that in our country it says you have to separate church and state. But that's not what the Bible said. The Bible said that when Jesus come, he would have the weight of the government on his shoulders. Your Jesus is a politician. And he's the greatest politician that ever lived. He's going to be the president of the universe forever. How many want to vote for Jesus tonight? How many know, though, that the church on a universal level has not been voting for Jesus? Amen? There's a devil in disguise. Hallelujah. And it's not about who's righteous. It's all about who's nice and polite. Amen? Come on, somebody. Give it to me straight. Give it to me in a hard faction if it's going to get me somewhere and cause me to prosper. But don't be nice to me and stab me in my back and grind it down into my flesh. Come on. Oh, I'm trying to behave tonight. I promised myself when I pulled in the parking lot I'm going to behave. Because it, it hurts me. It hurts me to see how lost Christians are. All this time I've been thinking, oh, my God, we got to get the world saved. we got to get the world saved. My God, we got to get the church saved. we got to get the church saved. Hallelujah. Am I making sense? And so I think what we have to have is a more solid amen. Amen? We've got to have a solid amen. We've not been accountable for our own amen but we want our brothers and sisters that sit on the pew with us, we want them to live right, we want them to talk right, we want them to act right, but we don't want nobody messing with us. Mm. This past Sunday, we kicked off our all-new series, A Solid Amen, and in it, we are addressing the uncomfortable reality of hypocrisy within ourselves. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, to let your yes be yes and your no be no. For whatever is more is from the evil one as far as swearing. He said, quit swearing to God. Quit swearing to this. Quit swearing to that. Don't swear on your children's life. Don't swear. Don't. You're getting yourself in trouble. When you do that, all you're trying to do is prove that you're telling the truth. And if you've got to prove you're telling the truth, then you must have had some kind of track record as a liar. You must have had some kind of track record as being shady and shaky, Right? He said, it's better not to do it at all. And so I was left. Jesus, the way he taught it there in that scripture, it made me say this. Say what you mean and mean what you say by never making promises you cannot keep. Don't do it. Hallelujah. Then in Matthew chapter 19, the rich young ruler asked what he still lacked. Reverend Chris, he said, he said, what do I need to do to get to heaven? What do I need to do to have eternal life? And Jesus gave him, I don't know what, half a dozen commandments. Don't murder, don't lie, don't steal. And he said, I've done all of those all my life. And most people, if Jesus had answered that, they were like, okay, well, I got it then. I'm good. And he could have walked away. But there was something inside him that said, what do I still lack? He said that, not Jesus. Jesus didn't say, but I'm, I'm here to tell you, you're still lacking a little something here. He didn't, Jesus didn't say that. The man asked that. And a lot of times we feel like we're not doing enough. And we have been guilty of beating ourselves up because religion beat us up. Amen? 
If you grew up being taught that God wants to think of a different reason to beat you down every day, you weren't taught about my God. He's a God full of love, he's a God full of grace, and he's a God full of mercy. But at the same time, we have taken that grace and we've made a disgrace out of it. And we've loosened it up so much so that our church looks more like the world than it ever did the church. Amen? Hallelujah. And religious people would look at me right there and say, well, the way you're dressed tonight, you look like the world. Well, that, come on, somebody. Can I tell you, I want to be comfortable on a Wednesday night. And I'm just as anointed in sneakers. Amen? Nothing against wearing a suit. I love a suit. I love my suits. But it's not about what a, a man's got on. It's about what's coming out of his mouth. And when the word of God quits coming out of my mouth, then I don't blame you. Get away from me. Go to another church. But as long as the written word of God is coming out of my mouth and I am preaching the truth, somebody back me up in this place. Oh. He said, what do I still lack? He knew he lacked something. Why did he feel that way? Because he was called to a greater purpose. Jesus wanted to give him a job. If his, let's say, I, t I think I gave the example Sunday morning of his name being Arthur. What if his name was Arthur? What if his name was Adam? What if his name was Chuck? Turn to the gospel of Chuck. <laughs> but we're not saying that. You know why? Because as soon as it, he found out it required more than he wanted to give, he got disappointed and he walked away. And Jesus said, man, it's hard for rich folks to get into heaven. Because sometimes, God don't require everybody to give up everything. But sometimes he does. And those that have given up everything, we who have not had to give up everything, need to help and support those who have. Amen? Amen? Come on, somebody. People like Chance Walters need to stay blessed. Why? He gave up everything. God didn't call me to go into all those countries. He called Chance. So what's my job? Help Chance. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. So we said to that, we said, if you can't live without asking the question, be sure you can live with the answer. Right? That question is burning inside of you. Make sure you can live with the answer. Tonight we'll look at another example, this time in the Gospel of John chapter 6, as we continue our all-new series a solid amen. Are you okay already? You're not mad at me already, are you? Okay. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Pray with me. Father, help me tonight to behave myself. But at the same time, God, preach your fire and your truth through your vessel tonight. I don't want to give my own personal opinion. I want to give heaven's opinion. For I'm not here to represent politics or any political party. I'm here to represent your party. And your party is the kingdom. And God, help me tonight as I relay this truth from your word that I believe will systematically help every person in this room and online tonight change their life, abandon what they don't need, and grab a hold of what they do need so that we can all be better for you so that when you return, you do in fact find us being all about your business. In Jesus' holy name, somebody say amen. amen. And if you know he's good, give him a hand clap of praise. All right, all right. My first and only focus point is this. When what you're a part of is just too solid to walk away from. When what you're a part of is just too solid to walk away from. The portion, this portion of Scripture that displays Jesus' most difficult teaching that actually turned many of his successful disciples what do you mean successful disciples? He anointed them and appointed them to go and heal the sick and cast out demons, and they did it. Okay? That's successful. But it turned many of his successful disciples away, and even today, many fail to describe what he meant and agree that they too would have had difficulty had they themselves been amongst the crowd back in that day. All right? Now, certainly what I'm about to read to you 
you would say, no, I, I'd have been fine. I, I'd, I'd, have had, I'd have been just like Simon Peter and the rest of them. Yeah, but you know the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey used to say. Suppose you didn't know New Testament gospel, and you wouldn't have known it then. All you would have had to do is trust in this carpenter's son who's standing in front of you teaching you something that really is shocking. All right? Let's look at it tonight. Jesus said in verse 47, are you with me? John 6. He said, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. He's talking about when Moses was leading the children of Israel through the wilderness and God rained down manna. He said, your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. It's different from manna. Okay, it's different from that. What do you mean? Manna was a natural resource from a supernatural source. Manna was a natural resource from a supernatural source, while Jesus himself is the supernatural source, right? He is the supernatural source. Verse 51, he says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh on the cross. On the cross. I wrote that in right there. Which I shall give for the life of the world. Now, what's he doing now? Jesus is foretelling of his ultimate sacrifice here where he'll literally give himself for the sin of the world. So he's giving a foretelling here of what he's going to do. He's going to lay down his life, and he's going to sacrifice his own flesh. Okay? They killed him. They killed his body. His body died. Jesus was God in the flesh, but his natural heart quit beating on that cross, okay? And he says, this is what I'm going to do. Then in verse 52, it says, the Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said to them, most surely I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. This is shocking. Jesus didn't tone down His shocking graphic rhetoric. Instead, He expounded on it and went further. Political correctness would have said, Jesus, you're losing your crowd here. They don't like this. This sounds gory. You're telling them to eat your flesh and drink your blood. What is this? Sounds like a horror flick. So to keep the peace and to make everybody happy and want to come back for the next sermon, you would have think he'd have backed up a little bit, right? Kind of like that, you know, Pastor, you need to tone it down a little bit, all right? Can you quit preaching on sin so much? Really? I mean, really. I've had some say, uh, leave the politics alone, Daniel. I mean, more people will want to come to your church. And I get that. I'm not here rallying for nothing. But in the days of when Israel was taken over, the prophets had to speak the word of God. This time, 2022 is so different than 2002. It's different than 1992, and it's different than 1982. We are in a mess. We are in a mess. And we got to wake up. I would have never thought, when I went to kindergarten, they didn't hand around books that showed Johnny and Jimmy are getting married. When I was growing up, there was a show called Bosom Buddies. It was where men dressed up as women, and it was a comedy. Today, that would be called hateful. I, my mama's favorite show growing up was MASH. There was a character on there named Klinger. Klinger dressed up as a woman so he could prove to the army that he was crazy and he needed to be sent home. 
So he was, uh, they were back then in Hollywood now, they were equating a man dressing up as a woman as having something mentally wrong with him so he couldn't serve his country. They couldn't make a show like that now because it's hate speech, right? And we've got CRT in our schools that takes a little black child and a little white child and puts them in front of each other and say, you owe this one this one and you need to think of him differently and you need to let him get. No, no, children don't think that way. You put a small little four-year-old black child with a little, small little uh, four-year-old white child and there's nothing but love. They want to play together. They don't see none of that junk. But they want to teach it to them when they're little children. Right? And, and we say, well, we would, never, we would never want that. Well, that's what the church has been voting for. We have a man that dresses up as a woman. He has fake breasts. And he has been appointed as the attorney general. No, not the attorney general, the surgeon general. Excuse me. People say, well, I didn't do that. Well, that's what you voted for. That's what you align yourself with. Come on, somebody. We got to wake up because we're not waking up. Amen. I know they're not talking about this down the road. But down the road, they're about to fall asleep right now. Come on, somebody. We are woken up. And we ain't woke, but we are awakened. Mm. Help me, Jesus. Am I helping anybody? Hallelujah. All right. Jesus didn't tone it down. He stayed on it. Oh, you don't want me to talk this way? You don't want me to preach this way? I'll preach even harder this way. Why? Jesus won't dare to unite. He's there to divide. Amen. Your pretty blonde-headed, blue-eyed Jesus with the heart locket. You ever seen that old picture of him knocking on the door? He's got a little heart locket on there. Yes, he's full of, full of love, but he's here to divide. Why? Mm, we're going to get into it. I'm about to get ahead of myself. Let's look. Verse 54. Now, you would think he would have toned it down, right? Most pastors would. Every politician would, maybe except one. Verse 54. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Ah, oh, there he goes talking about some eating some flesh and drinking blood again. That's some crazy talk there. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. That's the rapture rescue. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink. He won't quit. This, he says, concerning what we now know as Holy Communion. But they won't get in it. Verse 56. He who eats my flesh... Won't he stop? Who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. In other words, he who allows my Holy Spirit and the depth and power of my word to live inside of them. Now they could have got with that. Okay, that's making a little more sense. But he didn't put it that way. And the things of God are not always going to be easy when they come to you. Amen? Sometimes it's hard, but he's got a reason for it. I'm about to blow your mind. Here we go. No other person who ever walked upon the earth ever divided as much with their words as much as Jesus Christ. It didn't. What can be difficult to understand can exclude. Right? You say, wait a minute. Are you saying that the gospel excludes? Yes. It does. Everybody can't get with it. That's the reason our country is in the shape it's in. Because everybody don't want to fall in line with this. Amen? You mean the people sitting in the pews? No, the people in the pulpits. The people in the pulpits don't want to get with it now. Mm. Hallelujah. I have asked a man of God who just won a political office to come in here and sit down with us and let's have a talk about the state of our nation and our culture. Amen. 
And we're going to have that discussion right in front of you live very soon. Amen. Verse 58. He says, this is the bread which came down. Well, excuse me, verse 57. As the living Father sent me, I, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. Amen? This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. It got them through their natural life, but it didn't take them to their supernatural life. Only I can do that. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue, that was the Jewish church, as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? These are people whom he prayed for, laid his hands on, anointed them, and they went and cast out demonic spirits. They went and laid their hands on sick people, and those sick people got healed. And they've got a problem with this sermon. They don't like the sound of it. It sounds weird. It sounds gross. It sounds horrific. It is shocking. And he wouldn't let up. He just kept coming at it. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. What? This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? They're frustrated by the words of Jesus, which caused an instant disconnect. Instant disconnect. Sister Lily, you told me years ago, and you might not remember, but you said, son, you can do 100 things in the church, and 99 of them were right, but if you just do one thing, it might not have even been wrong, but it might have let somebody down or they didn't like it. That's all they're going to think about. They're not ever going to give you credit for the 99 things that they did like. Right? He empowered them to cast out devils. He empowered them to, to, to cause people who couldn't walk to walk again. He preaches one sermon that goes over their head and they're like, I'm done. And we say, no, we would never do that. But there's a lot of folks that do it all the time. They'll leave a church the first time they get mad. They'll leave a ministry and turn their back on a pastor the moment he says something they don't like. Amen. Hallelujah. A lady the other day went, knew who I was. I didn't know who she was. She went to running down a church and running down a preacher. Said, I'm going to see you. I said, you might want to think about that. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, I'm, I'll probably make you mad too. Before you come and see us, why don't you go over there and sit right back in that church and love on those people and see if God really wants you to leave. And if he does want you to leave, don't leave mad. Fifteen years ago, I'd have never done that. Young preacher, oh yeah, come to my church. I have learned some things now. If you don't help them with their problem, they're just going to bring the same bad attitude and the same easily offended attitude right on over here. And he's a brother in Christ. He's a good friend of mine, and he's a good person. Amen. And so anyway, where am I at, Billy Joe? 58? 61, have I got that far? This, uh, let me go back to 60. This is a hard saying. Who can understand it? They were frustrated by the words of Jesus, which caused an instant disconnect. Let me look at my first teaching point. I hope this helps you. Watch this. When frustrated because you don't understand God, will you turn away or trust Him anyway? Leave that up there right quick. You have two choices when you get frustrated. And you say, well, I don't get frustrated with God. He is good all the time. Let somebody die that you prayed would live. Let somebody not get healed that you prayed would get healed. And then deal with that frustration. You have two choices. You can give up and turn away, or you can trust him anyway. Because what's happening there, as bad as it hurts, as upset as you are, as disconnected as you are from God, the church, the word, uh, prayer, any of that, you've got to remember what if God has held you up to Satan and said, attack them all you want, 
but I'm counting on them to never give up. Amen? God knows who's going to give up and who's not. The devil don't know that. He does not know that. So he's just trying to see who he can get to agree with him. And those that give up agree with him. Amen? But those that will say, you know what? The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away, but my God, blessed be his name. Though he slay me, yet will I still trust him. And it's hard. Come on, somebody. It is hard. I learned it big time this year. Amen? With my holy anointed self. Walking around saying, mm, been in this a long time. I can't fall. I can't quit. I'm good. And my daddy didn't make it. Woo. All of a sudden, I had a choice. No, excuse me. I had two choices. I could turn away and walk away and be done. I'd slide back up in here in a few months and sit on the back row or to hear what the next man or woman had to say. Or I could say, the Lord gives. And he gave me 71 years. He gave him 71 years. And he let me be 46 years old. Not a lot of people get that. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be His name. I can't let my amen become shaky. Why? Because I don't sit in the pew. I stand behind this desk. And if I get shaky, you might get shaky. And your blood would be on my hands. Because one day I'll stand before God. And he'll say, I tested you. Did you pass the test or not? And I want him to already know right now. God, oh, I came close to giving up. But my amen is solid. Oh. What will you choose when the frustration from not understanding God hits you directly and personally? Amen? Jesus said in verse 61, when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? Only the solid ones would see that. They see it in Acts 1. They'd watch him. Float. Now you know that had to have made their amen more solid. Okay? But guess what? That's not how faith works. When you've been faithful... Then you get to see those amazing things. Because faith comes by hearing, not seeing. We walk by faith, not by sight. Good God Almighty. There's going to be some times when you can't see it. But if you can keep your ear up where you can hear it. Good God Almighty. I can, look, I can hear a jet plane fly over my house sometimes and I can look out there and it sounds like it's right on top of the house but it's in the clouds and I can't see it but I can still hear it what does that mean there's a jet flying over my house I can't see it but I got faith to know there's a jet up there somewhere amen that's how faith works hallelujah verse 63 is anybody is this helping anybody it's helping me hallelujah it is the spirit who gives life the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, who did not believe, and who would betray him. And he said, therefore I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my Father. Which it had. But it came with a choice. It comes with a choice. Because God has given everybody in here a free will. 
He wants you to choose him. And you would say, well, why do I have to choose him? Why do I, why, why do I got to choose between? Listen, we were made in his image. Do you know that we are God's potential? Right? When, listen, when, God, when, when, when we want something to happen, a lot of times we want to speak to it for it to happen. We don't need to speak to it. We need to speak to what is holding it, to let it go. God never said, let there be salmon, let there be bass. He just said, I'm going to make the waters, and the potential that's in that water, that's what's going to come from it. He never said, make tomatoes, make pumpkins, make squash. No, he said, I will make the earth, and the earth has the potential within it to produce those things. So the earth needs to let it go. Then when he wanted to make man, what did he do? What did he, do? he spoke to his own self because within him, his own self, he had the potential to make man. Because he said, man is made from my image. Amen? We have got to start speaking to what is holding things back from us and say, let it go. If the devil's got a hold of your family, if the enemy's got a hold of your marriage, it is time for you to say, let it go. Let it go. Mm. There's potential inside of each and every one of us. How many preachers have died and never preached a sermon? How many missionaries have died and never witnessed to nobody? People don't answer their callings. There is potential inside of us, but we don't want to let it go. Because our amen's not solid enough. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. This is the Lord's way of getting rid of fake people. Can I say that? This was the Lord's way of getting rid of fake people. Amen? How many has ever realized that some of the people in your life were fake? When it came time to be there, I've seen it. I've seen people, oh, I love him and I love that. Let somebody get sick. Let somebody not roll with you no more. Let your drinking buddy get sober and not want to drink with you no more. See how much, come on somebody. Am I talking right? Hallelujah. I just can't go around them. I can't see stuff like that. Well, quit being a weakling. Be a friend. Amen. Be stronger than that. Hallelujah. Praise God. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. This is, was the Lord's way of getting rid of fake people. As soon as, he got, as soon as, it got, as he got too difficult to understand, they were done. They were done. And I can't get past the fact that they had been used of God. They had been used of God to cast out demons and to heal the sick, and they were done. Amen. God can use people despite their mess. He can use people despite their shallowness. But if you decide to stay shallow and never go deeper, mm, 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 eventually you're going to get ticked off and turn away. He, in, he intentionally devised to see who is really with him. Can I say that again? He intentionally divides to see who is really with him. This is not a happy-go-lucky sermon tonight. This is not a kumbaya moment. Give me that uh, teaching point, number two. The Lord will weed out the crowd to get to the core. Amen. He will, he will weed out the naysayers. He will weed out the bystanders. He will weed out the fans in order to get to the followers. Are you a fan or are you a follower? Being a fan only gets you so far. You're hyped up over revivals. You're hyped up over conferences. You're hyped up over events. You're hyped up and we're having fried chicken on, on Sunday. Come on, somebody. But that's a fan. But if you're a follower, you'll say, you know what? Good God Almighty, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like a tree planted by the water. I don't care what happens or until God tells me to move. I'm going to stay right here. Ooh. And when you get weeded out, guess what happens? 
You're wide open to then be sifted as wheat. Jesus will weed you out. Once he does, and you're like, oh, my gosh. I'm not a part of the core anymore. I sure am shallow. My amen's not solid. There are conversations. I've said this before. There's conversations you need to have with yourself so that nobody else has to have that conversation with you. Amen? You would be surprised the things a pastor has to point out to people that they just don't see. Amen? And it don't mean the pastor is smarter than they are. It don't mean the pastor is a better human being than they, than they are. But good God Almighty, sometimes we get blind to our own mess and our own pride and what we think. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. I'm glad, Pastor Jerry, that I've had talks with myself so I didn't have to talk to you about it. Or you didn't have to come to me and talk to me about it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because you told me when we pushed his casket down that aisle, you looked it right at me. And you could have just said the polite thing. Son, I'm sorry for what you're going through, but you looked at me. And you said the devil is going to try to destroy you with this. Don't let him. Thank God for a preacher that'll tell you something. I don't get up here to rant and rave so you can leave and say, ooh, guess what my preacher said tonight. I get up here because I love you, and I've seen too many people fall away, and I've seen too many people get hurt by things that shouldn't have hurt them, and they don't come back from them. I've seen too many families destroyed. I've seen too many people backslide and never come on. I've seen people that want everybody to kiss up to them when what they need to do is get on their face in this altar and repent. <laughs> repent. His flesh could have told him, don't, don't mess with Daniel about that right now. No, I'll tell you exactly what you said. The devil's going to try to get you to go back to your old ways. He told that to a pastor of 15 years. That, what does that tell you? That means I don't care how holy you are, what kind of title you got in front of your name, you still got a flesh to contend with. And I have to wake up every day even though I've got pastor in front of my name and I've got to crucify this flesh. Because in this old life, this flesh was addicted to drugs and alcohol. And that's how people like me got over depression. That's how people like me in my old life got over sadness. But the new me has to press in to what I've been preaching about all these years. Oh, welcome to my therapy session tonight. It's been a hellacious year. Can I say that in church? I just did. <laughs> Watch people pass away. I've watched people backslide. I've watched people give up. And I've watched people get their lives destroyed and lose their mind. All in one year. Amen. I watched our country choose the wrong ways. And then they wonder why we're in the shape we're in. God is not going to let any politician or any political party take his place. He's not. And how great they are, how good a work they've done, they're still just a man. He's God. We need him. You need to vote the way you vote with common sense. Vote the Bible. Vote the Constitution. But don't quit praying. Come on, somebody, because the person sitting beside you might not even agree. Because the enemy has blinded them. We got pastors standing behind pulpits saying, get your mind off abortion. Get your mind off of it. 
I've had professed Christians tell me, quit saying stuff about abortion. We don't have the right to tell somebody else what to do. That's because to them, abortion is a medical procedure. But to me, abortion is murder. And that's where we disagree. It's all a matter of how you've been indoctrinated and taught to see it. We have a state in our nation that says if the baby is born during the abortion, take that baby, lay that precious little baby in a corner and let him lay there and suffocate and die and don't do nothing for him. That is murder. And the same people that believe that that's okay will go to church on Sunday and lift their hands. That is fake and there ain't nothing solid about that, amen. And if it makes you mad and you don't want to come here no more, hallelujah, God bless you. How many just turned us off online? How many did I just lose? Bless them, Lord. Y'all don't know the kind of messages I get. But just like my Jesus, I ain't going to quit. I ain't going to quit. I'll stir up every demon. I'm sick of all these devils getting in Christians' heads. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, verse 67, then Jesus said to the 12, now he's done had all these people leaving. I think Pastor Jerry was like 70 some that walked away. That's not very positive if you're trying to grow a church. Lose 70 people in one sermon. I'd lay down somewhere and go to sleep. I'd lay down somewhere and go cry. (laughs) <laughs> 70 walked away and only 12 stayed what does that tell you though 12 were solid Jesus said to the 12 do you want to go away too oh but oh good old Simon Peter he didn't always get it right but sometimes he did bless his heart that's why we identify him with him because sometimes we don't get it right Sometimes we don't say the right things. We'll say something, we'll post something, and say, ah, that was silly. What am I saying? Simon was that way too. But right here, he gets it right. Then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? But Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? I may not fully understand either, but there is no other option for me. Is that your belief? Sometimes God leads you to places and he put, you, you feel like you've been put into situations and you, you're waking up still dealing with that same depression and you're still dealing with that same bitterness and that same pain. You're like, why hasn't God lifted this up off of me? and Why is God letting me go through this and this and that and that and this? But have you still decided and formed in your heart that, you know what, no matter what happens, there's still no other option for me? And you live in a world where there's all kinds of options, right? That's what he was saying. I may not fully understand either, but there is no other option for me. And he follows it up with this. You have the words of eternal life. In other words, no one else does, so there's nowhere else to go to. You're the best thing going, Lord. Can I still tell you that he's the best thing going? Hallelujah. 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 Everybody else might give up, but I can't because I have never found anything better than him, and I never will. Verse 69, also, mm, he follows it up with an additional statement. We have come to believe and know. Somebody say believe and know. Believe Believe is deep. What you believe is deep. I'm not talking about what you think you might believe. I'm talking about what you really believe. And no is a word of intimacy. We're all adults in here. Sometimes the word no was used to characterize a man and a woman coming together to make a child. in A moment of intimacy. So no is very personal. It's very intimate. It's very passionate. It's very deep. Also, we have come to believe and know. That's deep. That's hard to turn from. 
believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Simon Peter, despite wavering himself in the very near future, spoke sound words here that absolutely permeated not only heartfelt devotion and trust, but plain common sense too. He was essentially saying that there weren't they that they weren't going anywhere just because of one sermon that was difficult to comprehend. Amen. He wanted to be solid because the one he followed was solid. Amen. Remember the rich young ruler that we talked about Sunday? He gave up and walked away as soon as what Jesus said sounded too difficult. He could keep the commandments, but he failed to follow Jesus. He could keep the rule. He could be religious. He could look the part. He could dress the part. He could act the part. But when it came to going deeper and truly following Jesus, he couldn't do it. What do we have to say about that? Give me that last teaching point. Watch this. I'd rather be a failed and flawed follower than a high and mighty quitter. Somebody ought to say amen to that. Only got like three amens. Come on, y'all. That ain't solid. Religion has taught you you can't fail. Religion has taught you you got to be perfect. But I've seen people act perfect and quit just like that. And I've seen people that have struggled, come on, and have working their salvation now. Come on, somebody through fear and trembling. They make mistakes, but they get up and they go again. And they're following Jesus. Give me them any day. Give me them any day. They might have messed up last week. They've asked God to forgive them, and they're back on track again, and they'll stay with you, and they'll be solid. Except the one that comes in and acts all perfect, high and mighty. They know more scripture than the pastor, and they'll correct him if he says anything wrong. And they'll pick up. Pick apart the first lady if she's not this or that. And they'll pick apart the deacon if he's not this or that. And they'll pick apart the the praise team if they don't play this and play that. They'll pick that apart and then they'll quit. That's not solid. I'd rather be a failed and flawed follower than a high and mighty quitter any day of the week. As I close... It may not always be easy to follow Jesus, but his track record is just too solid to walk away now. Hallelujah. I want you tonight to examine yourselves. We just come out of a two-month series where we learn how to pray in a deeper way than perhaps we had ever thought possible. We learned how heaven is set up. We've learned how to begin prayer, how to end prayer. We've learned a heavenly language, disguises our petition from the enemy, all of these things. So a church that's just come out of a two-month series on prayer, now we're examining how we end our prayer, what we agree to. Because we end every prayer by saying amen. A declared agreement. A phrase that says, so be it. And with that said, his track record is just too solid to walk away now. Don't walk away now. Amen. Amen. Did anybody get anything out of this tonight? (laughs) Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord a big praise tonight. Brother Eddie, what say you tonight concerning this word before we go over these prayer requests? Well, first of all, I want to say, Thou saith the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, brother. That was right on time. And, and as you were preaching, I, I couldn't help but think, you know, if Jesus himself was behind that pulpit, you know, we wouldn't see people walk just walking out, going to the bathroom and coming in. We'd see people walking out and staying out and leaving. You know what I mean? And leaving. Because they, they just couldn't take it. And, I, and I'm thinking, um, you know, we, we have to repent. And repent basically ma- means we have to change the way we think. Yeah. 
we have to change the way we think. And when he was preaching this, you know, he wasn't talking about the natural. He was talking about the spiritual. And when he's talking about the spiritual, how are we going to understand that unless we get into the Word, unless we pray? And it has, and it, ha, and it can't be just a one, one, you know, a few, few minutes a day thing. It has to be more. It has to be more. But you got to start somewhere, and I, and I understand that. But, but I promise you this: that if you do, if you get in the Word, if you stay in the Word, and and, and you and you pray and you earnestly seek God's face, then you will not only you'll you'll change the way you think you'll change the way you live and and when you change the way you live you you you, you don't only treat people better you know you treat yourself better and 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 if you and if you treat yourself better i mean you have and you show the love for those that you come in contact even though the, even those that you may not agree with simply because of they're they're thinking the world but you're thinking heaven you're thinking kingdom thoughts. You under, and, and, and I know that God, and that's what he wants ultimately from us, is a relationship that deep and intimate. And I, he loves us. He loves us. He wouldn't talk. Hey, look, I wouldn't tell my children what they wanted to hear when they were growing up simply because I wanted them to be safe. You know, I, I, if, if they were getting ready to touch an eye of a stove, I, I wouldn't say... Oh, that's okay. You, no, I would yell, don't do that. No, get away from that. You know, and that's what we need to hear. That's what we that's what we have to have. And that's why we're fortunate enough to have a pastor that is willing to, to speak the truth. And I am thankful for you. And I am thankful for this house. And I noticed while he was he was giving that word tonight, hey, nobody left. Everybody stayed. Hallelujah. Praise God. They're very polite. Amen. <laughs> Let, let's see if they come back Sunday. That's the true test. Yes, that's the true <laughs> test. Amen. <laughs> or next Tuesday. That's right. Thank you, that's Brother right. Eddie, for that. I appreciate that. All right. I don't have anything highlighted here, so I don't think there's any new added prayer requests. Do you have anything online? Okay. Go ahead and jog up here. Or lightly sprint. Lightly sprint. Such swagger in that man's walk. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Steve Wheeler. Second. He's passed out two times at work. They're doing tests on him. Ricky Simmons went to the doctor, found spot on the lung, found out it is cancer. We rebuke that. We need prayers for Seth Webb as he is battling MSUD and diabetes. And medicine is not helping. Doctors are not sure what's going on. This is Rebecca's cousin. Amen. Well, we know that God is the great physician. Doctors, we put a lot of faith in them. But remember, they're just practicing. They'll even tell you their whole career is a practice. But I serve a God that don't need to practice because he's perfect. Amber Byram is asking for prayer for her sons, Hayden and Sam, to break the fever and cough. Hallelujah. These are small children. So we are believing right now for them to come out of that. And it is good to have Brother Leon in the house. He just got out of the hospital. Hallelujah. Amen. My heart, my, my baby leaped tonight when I saw him. Hallelujah. Amen. My spiritual baby. I ain't trying to say a man can have a baby. You ought to be careful with that these days. People who think that. Hallelujah. And they're running the country. All right, here we go. We pray for all these. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stretch our hands forth right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against these diagnoses, Lord God. But we know you didn't bring them. We live in a contaminated environment. But God, we know that one day you're going to make all things new. But your word tells us that you're making a new heaven and a new earth for us to live in forever and reign with you. But until then, God, we are in this contaminated, polluted, sinful world. 
But God, we know as Christians, we can still strive supernaturally in that which is natural. So God, we speak healing for these folks because they wouldn't have asked for prayer if they didn't have faith in prayer. And so God, we ask you to reward that faith tonight in granting their petitions tonight, Lord God. Break the fever in these babies tonight. Amber wants to be here. She's an up-and-coming leader in our church. Help her tonight, Lord God. Help all these folks tonight we've mentioned and those we've not mentioned, those on our prayer list and those not on our prayer list. And God, I ask for your hand to be upon me in this thought-provoking, convicting sermon series that I believe you're going to take us deeper in a way like never before. But we are going to come out of this thing stronger with a more solid amen. Lord God, we're going to live our amen. We're going to back up our amen because of what you are teaching us from your living word. We praise you, we love you, and we thank you. For it's in your name we pray. Somebody say amen. Say amen again. Come on and give him praise tonight because he alone is worthy. I want to thank our online audience. We'll see you back online at 10 o'clock Sunday morning. God bless you. Hey, everybody. Pastor Daniel Parker here with Assistant Pastor Tim Hall thanking you for tuning in this week and watching this live stream broadcast. Or if you're watching it recorded later on, we thank you. We want you to share it with everybody that you can. Hit like. Tell us something in the comments if we're reaching you. And if you're in driving distance, we would love to have you right here at Christian Fellowship Church on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Come early for coffee and fellowship, and then we're going to have some of the best praise and worship music you'll hear anywhere and series preaching straight from the Word of God. Then on Wednesday nights, we have our weekly Bible study at 7 p.m., and we got all kinds of things going on Sunday evenings, life groups, men's and ladies fellowship, as well as our all-new Kingdom Couples marriage ministry we love you we want you to to sow into the church be a part of the church come on we love you if you got saved today you accepted jesus christ into your heart then we want you to message us right here on our page and we will call and pray for you again thank you for tuning in today pastor tim what say you to the wonderful people out there that's tuned in today we pray if this message has reached you because we're all about kingdom vision amen come see us well, we got to seek just for you. We love you. We thank you. And just continue to keep your faith in God's unchanging hand. And we enjoyed you. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless.